name is Sandra. I'm with East Hill. And we do take care of our homeless. What we have discovered basically is we need to educate our community. Sometimes our community really doesn't understand that there can be difficult times for everyone. And they see so many people around that they feel are homeless and that they're going to get robbed or they're going to get hurt or they're going to get cheated, whatever. If you really look into the statistics, you'll see that that's not correct. We have gotten 21 homeless people jobs. It is not easy to get a homeless person a job because ID has been taken, their birth certificates are lost, their cars have been broken into, they've had the same problems as the average person has had. We also have had 18 people go back to their home churches so that they can share and they can run. Our goal is to help those that want to learn. We have fed many, many, many people, hundreds. We have had the homeless bring what little bit of food that was given to them, to us, to share with those that are there for the day. We're open only one day a week, but there's quite a few people and they want to be part of the community. So I made a plate of cookies from zucchini bread and I visited our community, went into the homes, talked to the people that own the homes and asked them, how do you feel? Oh, I don't feel good about it at all. They could take my mail, they could do this. And I said, okay, what if we talk to you and educate you on how and what you can do? They sat down and they listened. <coughs> Have you talked to the people around your community? They don't really know. They want to know, but are we out there? We have nine churches that we meet with once a month. And believe me, our community is on top in a good way. And our homeless is also. We thank God for all the different churches that have participated, given, shared. There's a young man here, too, that I saw today. He wanted to buy a beautiful home. It would have housed 80 people. He was willing to pay for the property, pay for everything. It had 10 acres in the back. We talked and thought maybe a trailer court could go back there or a campground. Maybe the person that wanted to park their trailer there could pay a little finances. That way it would help. And those that had no jobs and were homeless could do the work, clean the windows, paint the doors, whatever. He decided he would do it. He agreed. We got the price way down and we were ready. But the city said, because the community would be upset. Tell me, how? How? Do you have suggestions as to how we should educate the community? Maybe there's a really good way that you know. And we are open. We'd like to hear it. Thank you. And I think that that's what a lot of tonight is about, is hearing these ideas and these suggestions. So, uh, to look at people, anyone here can be homeless. And I think that um, 
All you need is a run of bad luck. And I've talked to a lot of homeless people in the context of personally sharing my home, renting rooms to low-income people or no-income people, and also having the support groups and the education that people need for this issue. Now, I think it's really important that people look at Europe. Look at the displaced economic refugees. Look at what's happening in our inner cities. We have a lot of people that are really so struggling. And, and the people that we worked with in our group as a nonprofit, we received funding as a 501c3 for people that were chronically, chemically injured from on-the-job work, like myself. I worked in a lab and I got poisoned. Okay, and it's really, you know, work, you have to be able to breathe to work. And you have to be able to move to work. And so any disability really hampers people from being able to make a living. And then I worked in nursing homes for five years. And it's, it's just appalling what people have to go through when they get old. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> and there are plenty of seniors that are also homeless. So I wanted to just say that think of people as displaced economic refugees, just like in Europe and what they're going through now. Respectful of everyone else. You get lots of good information. So. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Doug. Um, I know Steve. I've known him for probably years. He's a phenomenal guy. A lot of great work. Unfortunately, I live in Wilkes East. I was at that uh, round table pizza deal, and that neighborhood association wants to shut the bread barn down. They want the city, they are going. Next meeting, they are trying to want to start trying to shut it down because my cars, our cars have been broken in over six different times. People have jumped my fence and broke and stole stuff out of our yards. I don't know if it's who it is, doesn't matter. But that neighborhood is upset because there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of stealing down there. Who knows where? Um, some of the solutions you said, like Steve said, they need a place to camp. Find a place to camp, and go in the spring water trail and clean it out. Please cut all the weeds, do whatever you want. I, I came up with a solution once for that was let get it cleaned up and then run goats through the whole trail. Let them eat all the vegetation. They wouldn't have any uh, more camps. They wouldn't be able to camp. It has to be cleaned up. They need. We can build tiny houses, but you know, unfortunately, you can't do it in the city of Gresham. You can't do a lot of them because you don't have the regulations. To do that, you can't put a shelter in this city either. All the rules say no. But I can build a hotel or a motel, and I can rent out the rooms, and you let it go. So I mean, it's it's like the city needs to go. Okay, we need to get smart, find a way to do this, and let's do this. We can. I can build you housing. I can build you more houses. We can build them out of cargo containers. You know how many cargo containers there are. One port in New York City, there's over a million cargo containers that can be used for housing. Housing is not the issue. It's will a city, in their infinite wisdom, be willing to quit looking at whatever they're looking at, their planners, and start working with the community deciding to do stuff. If you don't want to do it, fine. But at least tell us, no, we don't want to do that, we, and, and we'll find another solution. Get around the city. So this is kind of where I'm at. And that's what you need. You need to provide a place for them to camp, a place where we can build some housing, a place where we can put a shelter in so we can get them off the streets. Then we can get them into a place where they can be sleeping on cots, and then into an SROs, then into apartments, and some into houses. We can build tiny houses for four or five thousand dollars. So I mean, but the city. That's why we're here tonight. We're opening a dialogue. We're opening a conversation. Some of the things that you talked about, Doug, have to do with building codes that, that pre-exist all of us, and some of the stuff is new. That's why we're having a conversation. So don't give up on the city. We are all the city. Okay? There's a gentleman back there. And then we have one. Okay. Oh, I just want to state the obvious uh, to the people complaining about the homeless. 
throwing garbage down on the street. They probably don't have garbage service, I'm guessing. Uh, homeless that are urinating. Um, they probably don't have a house. They don't have a bathroom. They need a place to go to the bathroom. And then commenting on what the chief said about putting up a little piece of paper before they sweep out those camps. Just because he puts up a piece of paper with services on it does not mean that the people can come and read and go, oh, I, I can go find a house. I mean, this tells me where to go. And I can, you know, that, those two things don't equal each other. So uh, I guess I'm pretty much agreeing with what everybody said. We need to find housing for these people. Okay, thank you. And we can the blue tie or the or his designee. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jana. Um, I'm almost 10 years now. And I've worked really, really hard to get where we're at. Um, I have been homeless. I have lived out of my car. I know what it's like. It sucks. But there came a point in time search for resources, you start taking accountability. I feel for this lady over here who's, who's gone through some hard times. She's a person I really, really want to help. That is someone that needs help. But I also know that there's a lot out there that are choosing it as well. And it's hard to go between both of them. And I find myself wanting to help so many, but I'm becoming more jaded and I don't like it because yelled at. We're not giving money. We're willing to give them food, we're not giving them money. I've, our house was broke into, and no, we don't have a whole lot, but we have a lot that we worked for. And it was really hard to find out that just down at Spring Water Trail, this beautiful trail, there's camps down there. I don't have a problem with camps, but what I have a problem with is when there's car stereos. DVD players, CDs, that's stuff we worked for, and they came and took from our homes. That's where we have the problem. It's not that we have a problem with the homeless. We want to help the homeless, but we're running into this barrier, and I don't really know the solution, but I think that's what everybody's here trying to find, and it's hard. We do need home. We do need places for them to go. But we also need them to do their part. I know some of them are doing their part, so I know it's not all of them. But we also need them to be able to give back to their community, to give back to if we have homes for them and tents and these places. You can still keep them up and take care of them. Like I said, I know. I've been there. When you don't do that, it makes the rest of us do take care of ourselves and we do work hard and have got the homes that we have because we've worked really hard and been through our struggles and we see things that we are giving and providing not being taken care of it really makes us think twice about who am i giving this to i want to give it to this lady over here who needs help who needs help who needs home who's not just well it was given to We need to come up with a way that we can have helping get their homes. Like you were saying, wash windows, do services, I mean, car wash, whatever. Teach them. Teach them how to pick up after themselves and stuff. And you're right, there's no toilets and stuff. We've got to get to a point where we have a place for them to do that. You know? And the people that are having on Springwater Trails, they're, they're having issues with theft. Scared for their kids, scared for their families. That's where the conflict with the homeowners and the homeless are coming into play. I'm not afraid of homeless, but I am afraid of those that are on the drug. I am afraid of those who want to take what I've worked hard for and hurt me for it. They can have it if it's that big of a deal, but I don't want to get hurt. I don't want my husband hurt. I don't want my neighbors hurt because of this. And I've watched our neighborhood change so much in six months. Locks, doors, cameras, windows. And 
I'm talking screen doors. Our neighborhood was so nice. I'd walk through it at 11 o'clock at night and not think twice about it. Two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm watching everything now. And no, it's not homeless. It's the ones that are coming to our homes to take the stuff. Okay. Thank you. We're getting close to the end of our time. So one thing I did want to follow up with you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, the chief wrote an, uh, oh, an article uh, it's in a few places about not giving money to the homeless. Do you want to just hit a couple of the highlights about why that's not a good idea? I suspect everyone in this room kind of knows that, but if you can carry the message forward. Which, um, can you just tell us what some of the sections are in the letter? So this has been with Rick Summers from the Five Rivers of Rescue along the Spring yeah. Water Trail, and it has been so scary. And um, responding to the citizens that reported having yes. a problem with them, I think that okay. was What we're going to do, Terry, is I'm going to ask you to talk about this real quick, then I, I promised another Doug. How many Dugs are here? <laughs> <laughs> Never know. So yeah, I promised him, and then, we'll, then we were okay, part of wrapping up, and we're going to get yeah. that up. So thank you for that segue. Thank you, Counselor. So I wrote an editorial about a year ago, and it dealt with giving money to the homeless. And what I wrote about was, if you give money to the homeless, and real quick, I've been in this job a long time, I have a lot of experience, and some people in the room may tell me I'm wrong, but I believe there's four kinds of homeless people out there. One, that are truly victims of the economy. Two, that are addicted to some kind of alcohol or drugs. Three, that have mental health issues. And the fourth one are people that choose to be homeless. Now, a lot of people in this room are going to say, you're absolutely wrong about the fourth one. Until you go out there and talk to these people, they truly enjoy or like being homeless. That's their lifestyle. So I wrote this editorial that... When you give the money to the homeless, <coughs> if they have that addiction issue or some home or some mental health issues, that money is not going to help them. It's going to hurt them because they're going to buy alcohol, they're going to buy drugs, and the money is not going to be productive. So my suggestion is if you feel that compassion, which we all have compassion for the homeless, I don't think that... People should be living in the Springwater Trail, defecating in buckets and living like that. So if you feel that compassion and you want to give the money to the homeless that are out there, then donate that money to places like this. Human Solutions, Snowcap, the places that provide the service. So enough with that. Believe me, I... Somebody mentioned it at a meeting two or three weeks ago that I don't live with the homeless problem 24-7 like they do because they're near their camp. Well, I disagree because I not only live with that problem, but I live with gang homicides, burglaries, robberies, and everything else 24-7 that affect this community. So... I myself, in the seven years that I've been here, this was probably the summer that impacted the community the most. There seems to be more homeless out there this year. Whatever the reasons are, I don't know. Some say it's Portland's push on uh, trying to eliminate the homeless from downtown Portland. Whatever. It just seems worse this year. So a lot of the issues that we're dealing with as far as law enforcement are those nuisance type problems. And somebody said earlier in the night that I said 5% of the homeless people are problems. 5% are problematic to the police department that are committing the thefts, that are committing acts of violence, things like that. But truly there's more than the 5% that are creating issues in our community. And what they're doing is affecting the quality of life of people in our community. One of the big issues is our iconic parks, Main Street Park, Red Sunset Park, where the homeless people are in there during the day. Most of them are harmless. All they're doing is sitting under the coho shelter, sitting on the benches, but they have their carts, they have their belongings with them. How that affects the quality of people's life is that a mother with her two small kids is probably not going to go visit 
and Sunset Park or Main City Park because they fear those people. Now, granted, maybe nothing will happen, but there may be an encounter, like somebody said here on the trail, that they were frightened by the people. So we've tried to, believe me, the council, me, the mayor, everyone is concerned about the homeless issue. If we could solve the homeless is issue, we could solve global warming, world hunger, <laughs> and everything else. We can't. It's a bigger societal issue than Gresham. But we're trying. We're doing several things. And when we go to clean up the camps, it's because they're destroying our environment. They're not living in a good manner. So what we're trying to do is get them out of there. And that, that gentleman over there, you're absolutely right. Some of these people can't read that notice that we post. But we can only do so much. The school system has to take some credit for that one. But we are trying to get them connected with services. There have been studies that show that if you can get a homeless person into stable housing, even if they have addiction issue or mental health issues, the chances of them sustaining in that are good. Not great, but good. So we're trying to connect those things. Put officers out on bikes the last two summers because of complaints by the community of the homeless in infiltrating their neighborhood. Now these officers absolutely do they take enforcement action when warranted when they see crimes occurring with the homeless? Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. I'll own that. That's me. I tell them if you see crimes in progress that they're doing things that are illegal then we take enforcement action. But they're also out there trying to develop those relationships to try to get these people into stable housing. That example that was given at the very start of the meeting, that woman that was reunited with her family in Eugene, four months of almost everyday contact with a police officer with the Gresham Police Department it took to get her in down there to reunite with her family. It's not an easy thing. They have the officers out on bikes. We pay for two homeless outreach workers that go out into the, the trails, go into the camps, and what they do is try to build that relationship. They can build a relationship that police officers can't. There's just something about this badge and this uniform that scares people. I don't know how I could possibly scare it. But. So we recognize the issues in the city, and it all boils down to What's the quality of life you want in your community? And I've been here seven years. We've lost two bond measures in seven years. Every time we try for additional resources, to try to solve gang issues, try to solve the burglary problem, the robbery problem, it gets defeated. I don't know what we can do. With limited resources or calls for service are going up. The last five weeks, we've had four homicides. You know what, you know, we're, but we have to keep trying. There has to be solutions out there. But the homeless issue, the police department cannot arrest their way out of it. We can't. 